Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today is Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you today. Good morning, Dr. Paul. How are you this morning? Very well, thank good, you. Good. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the military-industrial complex, and they won't even know about it. It will all be secret information <laughs> and revealing what they're really up to. I found out that the military-industrial complex is up to selling weapons and making money. And they say they're just patriots, you know, protecting our country. But I think uh, most of our audience would understand, <laughs> understand, understand the difference. But there was something going on pretty close on our borders. And, you know, borders are very important. I think borders represents the homeland, just as our home should be our castle. I think you have to have borders if you want to protect uh, your viewpoint on civilization. And so borders uh, are always being fought over for various reasons, mostly for people who want more land and, and uh, for other many causes. But uh, right now, uh, you know, we got into a border dispute and we run the show and that's over in Ukraine. We're trying to sort out the borders over there. But I understand there's a peace treaty coming up and they're going to meet. Mm. But guess what? Russia's not invited. Uh, that'll work well. We wouldn't want them to muddy the waters on dealing with a peace treaty and the borders. But we have our own problems, which is getting to be a message. People are talking about that more. Not, not that I don't think uh, that they should have been talking about it uh, you know, a long time ago, like I think they should have talked about going into Iraq and these different places, or even uh, even Vietnam, a long time before they get, uh, you know, bogged down, killing a lot of people and wasting uh, wasting a lot of money. But here, uh, the article today that we want to start off with is uh, from Zero Hedge, and it says Mex Mexican TV spots cartel wielding anti-tank rocket launchers in border towns near Texas. Wow. It's getting close to our homeland. And, uh, you, you know, it was only, you know, a couple uh, drug dealers down there that was causing all the trouble. But where do these rocket launchers come from? Uh, you know, do, do the Mexicans make them down there? Or, <laughs> or just what? But anyway, it sounds like an acceleration, which the American people know about, and they're trying to sort it out, and there's been a shift in attitude because uh, the nonsense that goes on doesn't even recognize the, uh, uh, recognize the fact that there are still some Americans who still believe that our homeland deserves a little bit of protection. And uh, in order to uh, make the point, we should be mining our Q P's and Q's and not invading the homeland of any other country. Yet we're all over the world, so there's a tough making the argument that they ought to leave us alone. But this, this is, I, I think we could put this in the category a little, bit, a little bit of acceleration of what's going on on our borders. Yeah, I think I would call blowback, really. <laughs> you know, that's what it is. And let's put the first one up. <clears throat> you know, we know that the cartels pretty much run the show down in Mexico. These aren't your friendly neighborhood drug dealer. These are serious military forces. Well, this is the first time that Mexican television did, did a segment where they spotted, and we can go to that <clears throat> next picture, because this is the picture they ran. If we can expand that a little bit. This is a person wearing the Gulf Cartel patch on his back. He is operating in Mexico as part of the cartel, and what he's carrying in his right shoulder is apparently a javelin, and some would say a Norwegian anti-tank rocket, both of which, Dr. Paul, have been sent by the tens of thousands to Ukraine. And we have heard evidence that these have been available on the black market, and now it looks like they've made their way not just to the Mexican cartels deep in the heart of Mexico, but literally on the border of Texas. The weapons we sent to Ukraine, we've talked about this over and over, the danger of saturating Ukraine with, with weapons without any kind of guidelines, without any kind of, like we talked about yesterday, Senator Paul, so we need to have someone keeping an eye on what's going on over there. Instead, we just send it willy-nilly, and now we're seeing literally on the border with Texas, a person carrying an anti-tank missile from Ukraine. You know, the uh, one thing they don't talk a whole lot about is when we change policies and we send weapons hither and yon, is what is the risk? Uh, the risk, 
of uh, peace and the risk of American soldiers and American taxpayers. They, they never really uh, talk about that. And yet that is what should be done because here we have all this activity here and the risk of Ukraine is a, even a, a better example of this is how many people have died so far under the hands of weapons and, and our activity there, you know, many, many thousands of people die. And, you know, there was one report was, sh was sickening, and I don't know what exactly it meant. Yeah, they had this battle a week ago, and they said they sent in a bunch of troops just to make a show, and they were they were probably the ones that weren't up to speed, and they uh, they were really untrained. They yeah. admitted it. Send them out there to, to make a point. Uh, they certainly didn't make a victory. So it's, it's uh, it's a, that, that is generally what they ignore. Who, who's at risk, and uh, when will the blue back, blowback come? They don't. They don't really ever ask that question. I mean, I mean let's put on the next clip because this, this I think ex, uh, accentuates your point. Not the clip, but skip ahead to the map because this is just about the. Now this is interesting. Now, do we want to live in a country, Dr. Paul? Do we want to live in a state? If you can see that map there, that's Texas. That red dot. That red pointer is where this member of the Gulf Cartel was photographed using most likely Javelin anti-tank missiles. Do we want to have drug cartels on our border with something capable of shooting down a, a commercial passenger jet? Can you imagine? And it, this, I'm not the first one to, to think about this, but these we've already agreed these people are very ruthless people. They're, they're not going to be talked down from what they're doing. And now imagine if this guy who we saw with this javelin, if he had some intel that a rival cartel member was on a commercial uh, aircraft going over, do you think he would hesitate <laughs> to shoot it down? You know, that is the real danger. And it's, it's growing now, and it's not over thousands of miles in Europe. It's literally on our borders, the danger to commercial air travel. Well, maybe some people read this thing and they are reassured and they don't worry, but the article we're reading uh, closes with a, a, a bit of a cynical comment. It says, but don't worry, because the Biden administration repeatedly states everything is fine on the border. Yeah, everything is you, fine. You have, to be able, you have to be able to trust your leaders. Yeah. What kind of a country would you have if the leaders of the country and their, their policing activity, they tell lies, then we end up with trouble. And it doesn't need to be said, but I'm a bit cynical about yeah. all that, I'll tell you. And, uh, and I think that's why conditions get worse and worse. Yeah, it's dangerous. Well, you know, when we put the show together, we try to put the stories in a particular order that makes the point we're trying to make today. And today, the point we're making is the absolute danger of sending these thousands and thousands of weapons overseas. So juxtaposing our first story, which is javelins on the border, what is the response of the Biden administration? We'll put on that next clip. It's not to say, hey, we need to check this out. No, it's to say, we need to send more weapons to Ukraine. <laughs> this is from our friend Dave DeCamp at antiwar.com. U.S. announces $300 million weapons package for Ukraine. So they're already wake, making their way to the cartels in Mexico and God knows where else. They're probably up for sale on eBay right now. But forget that. It doesn't matter. We've got to send them 300 million more, including, and if you do that next clip, including all these goodies like uh, additional munitions for Patriot Air Defense System. Why do they need additional ones? Well, they've already been blown up. Uh, AIM-7 missiles, Avenger air defense missiles, Stinger anti-aircraft systems, HIMARS missiles, etc., etc., etc. So all of these goodies that are finding themselves spread across the globe increasingly, we're just going to keep sending more and more with no checks and balances. And uh, David, uh, Dave uh, man, makes a point in this article, which is something they people don't want to hear and they don't want to take it seriously. Uh, and he simply says the most recent Ukraine bill was $45 billion, That's all. but they're about to run out of it by the end of the year. So this is, this is economic planning to make yeah. sure that uh, the checks to the military industrial complex never slow down and that there's never any anticipation that, that the enemies will be overwhelmed with peace or something like that. So that, that is a bit of a problem. But the other thing that bugs me about this issue <clears throat> is, um, is it's so bipartisan. Yeah. <laughs> they, you know, they've been spending a few weeks on the budget, <laughs> lying and innuendos going on, few people getting upset for the right reason. <clears throat> 
but no change. The people who said this will make no difference. It will only pacify and make things worse as the, as the conditions go on. But uh, the, the bipartisanship is the strongest yeah. uh, in, in military spending because they, it wasn't even brought up, really. Yeah. You know, somebody wants to make a point about, oh, well, we have to watch the borders and this sort of thing, but they're, they're not really changing their attitude because that thing just sailed right through and some of the things that they thought were very, very important about, you know, can we make people work if they're going to get their food stamps yeah. and think that that is the issue that's gonna change things, and that doesn't even touch on the philosophy that produces the problem we have. Yeah, no, that's a great point. we got to watch our borders, but we also have to send more weapons to Ukraine, and the weapons end up on our borders. So you're right, the hypocrisy is really, is really high there. Well, I think this next article is kind of, you know, like Ukraine a couple years later, because this is actually fascinating. If you can put this next one, this is, on, this is from The Cradle, which is an excellent online news publication. The Taliban, Dr. Paul, is going to war with Iran. And here's the, the headline is Taliban deploys heavy reinforcements to Iran border. And I'm looking at this picture and I'm thinking, what is interesting about this picture of the Taliban going to the border with Iran for war? Well, the vehicle they're <laughs> riding in is an American vehicle. Hmm, and I wonder why they're riding to the border of Iran in an American vehicle. Because we left these vehicles and we left these weapons in Afghanistan when we hightailed it out of there on that jet. Yeah, yeah I have, I have a, had a thought about that when you were talking about it, but this would be terrible if this could, well, it's always could be true, but what if, what if we didn't, have, didn't lose the Afghan war and uh, mistakenly the weapons ended up in their hands? And what, what, if, what, what if the Afghans are working in behalf of, of us? Because who are they attacking? The Iranians. Yeah. We're not on the Iranian side. But are we on the, uh, we're, we're not possibly on the Taliban side because they're the bad guys. <laughs> but, I, but I don't think they ever even think that through, nor do they have any concern at all because consistency uh, would, uh, uh, you know, challenge being able to lie anytime you want to because lying uh, facilitates the uh, inconsistency that you have to live up with. And of course, uh, empires, the stronger they are, the more they have to lie to maintain, maintain their power so uh, this is a little bit bizarre uh, but there you know if it were isolated and we weren't there and we didn't send the weapons and all you'd say well this doesn't sound too unusual for people to be arguing yeah. over water yeah yeah it, it might be a very significant significant event going on and uh, should be thought through so you know carefully but who knows what will result on that who i don't think by now anybody's worried well they're, not, they're worried but no, nobody's deciding where the water is going to be going next month <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's funny because i was having that same thought as i read through this because it almost seems too good to be true to the cia and the neocons like how do we get how do we attack <laughs> Iran? How do we? We wanted the Saudis to do it, but darn it, they made peace with Iran. That's so infuriating. Oh, we've got an idea. Let's put the Taliban. Let's get Mikey. Uh, let's put the Taliban on it. And so, I mean, if true, I have to admit it would be kind of clever if the CIA was successful in doing this and using the Taliban. But if it wasn't deliberate, it was one of those unintended consequences yeah, yeah. that did the same thing. Yeah. It's very bizarre. But let's look at a couple clips on this just to kind of give some of the details. If we can go to the next one here, that next clip. So the outbreak of fighting came after the Iranian president warned the Taliban to respect Iran's water rights. I've seen some people on Twitter saying it's not about water rights. Nevertheless, I don't know the details. The details aren't necessarily important for our purposes in this program. But if you go to the next one, this is also, this little sentence here, Dr. Paul, was what's, what piqued my interest. Um, despite videos showing reinforcements on the border, Iranian vi media reports suggest that, quote, some elements are trying to provoke the parties involved with rumors and fake news. And I'm thinking, who are those elements? You know, maybe they're from Langley. Maybe it's John oh. Bolton. You mean you would be losing your confidence in our <laughs> national security apparatus? <laughs> so. and, and here's what it's all about if you do the next one, because this is what we're talking about um, in Afghanistan. Following Washington's chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan in 2021, the U.S. Army left behind $7.12 billion dollars 
and military equipment in the country, which immediately fell into the hands of the Taliban. They're using our weapons to fight Iran. It's pretty weird. You know, and every once in a while, people will call attention to us leaving uh, Vietnam, which was a tragedy. And visually, you know, equal to what we were watching with Afghanistan. But uh, I, I've heard people, you know, need have feeling a need that they had had to defend, uh, you know, the, the leaving of Vietnam. But I didn't I didn't see it that way, because one thing that you can measure disaster by is money spent, dollars, how many years. How many people died? Yeah. You know, it was horrible what we were doing and looking aggravating and so ongoing and never ended in Afghanistan. But what, what happened in Vietnam is, uh, you, you know, and, and the reason we left and under what conditions, you can't say, oh, that one was okay, but it's the one in Afghanistan. I think there's a little bit of partisanship, you know, in the way they describe those two things. They're both bad and they were both bad for us being involved, but you can't say, well, you know, you know, Afghanistan's much worse than Vietnam. Vietnam's old history. Who yeah, cares now? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, the last one we want to talk about is still it's related because so go through the progress. These weapons fall, lined up, wind up in Mexico from Ukraine, obviously anti-tank weapons threatening commercial air, uh, air, uh, air flight. Then you have another three hundred billion dollars, a million dollars of weapons going to Ukraine. Doesn't matter. And then you have the Taliban using our weapons to go ahead and attack Iran. And now the next one is completely unfazed. The U.S. empire goes on with its policy of global domination. Let's look at this next one. And this is from our friend Car uh, Kyle Anzalone in the Libertarian Institute. NATO holds Arctic war games hours from the Russian border. So they are literally a few miles from the Russian border and holding war games. What if <coughs> Russia were holding war games where that guy was carrying the, the missile, right? <laughs> yeah, they, this is just another item because we were complaining yesterday or the day before about what was going uh, on uh, with the drones. Our drones, our money, yeah. our training, our uh, puppets, uh, you know, that do what we tell them to, He's sending them into Moscow. Oh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to kill Putin. Yeah, yeah that's, that's real good. That's and then, uh, then, then, of course, well, let's have a peace, let's have a peace conference. We need to do it. Yeah, but don't ever let the Russians in. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it, it's exasperating. And uh, it, it's, it's such a shame that that's the way it has to be. But I still think it's worthwhile for the few of us and the few, many few, I would say, that really support what we're trying to talk about. Because there's not many people, uh, like this, the cynical argument I always made, the young people, 18 to 25 in one country, don't get together with the 18 to 25s in another country and say, you know, this sounds like a good, why don't we have an old fashioned war? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, that, uh, that's not the way it works. It's a no. bunch of bad people that get control of government. <clears throat> That's why so many libertarians, you know, approach uh, a position, really, most government, and some believe all government, are detrimental. And, uh, but the government cer certainly should be very limited. And if you were meticulous and a determined person to follow the Constitution, it would not be perfect, but it would be a heck of a lot better than the uh, authority that goes on today, uh, just granted executive orders and, and uh, you know, what 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 we have to do for national security, you know, the monetary issues, on and on. The, Consti the Constitution has so little value, but a lot of people in this country still believe it's worthwhile trying to preserve and renew the confidence that we once had on the rule of law. Yeah. Well, this, 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 this topic really has to do with the NATO expansion that we just saw, which is NATO expanded to include Finland. And what is the first thing that happens when Finland becomes a member of NATO, it hosts exercises on Russia's border. And that's exactly what Russia said we, was going to happen. That's exactly what they warned would happen. And you could say, well, they don't have any right to say anything. It's not in their country. Yeah, you can make that argument. But the fact that it is, it is a provocation, it is uh, something that we would not accept in our borders, uh, yet somehow everyone else is supposed to accept it. If you can put that next clip up, this, will, this is from Kyle's piece. The Northern Atlantic Alliance began military drills hosted by Finland, just miles from the Russian border. 
An American af- defense official said the war games show the bloc's commitment to the newest member of NATO. U.S. Army Major General Gregory Anderson said on Tuesday, we're here, we're committed. Well, maybe they should be committed, <laughs> but to somewhere else because it's just a, f- a foolish exercise. It's a foolish uh, exercise in brinksmanship that doesn't do anything for our defense. The unity in NATO is is pretty good. I resent the fact when they talk about Russia invaded Ukraine and this is how this all got started. Uh, It's a war of NATO against Russia as far as I'm concerned. In this uh, this example of what's going now up uh, on the Arctic Circle in Finland, 7,500 NATO troops. (laughs) I hope they have their winter coats and all. They'll probably be there for years. And uh, it was admitted that, and everybody recognizes this, and even wars are fought. We need to test the weapons. Yeah, weapon really. testing. So they have, so they do that by first demonstrating them, uh, and at times they have to sh- shoot them off to show how powerful they are. And uh, they also, you know, appeal to the people who uh, hate Russia. They say this is to show how tough we are going to be against Russia. And by the way, it's bipartisan now in the Congress. There is some. Some Democrats are even noisier than Republicans yeah. about why we have to, boy, you know, you could pick out the most militant Democrat and the most militant Republican. Wouldn't that be interesting to compare? Yeah. They're, they're both so bad right now. The Uniparty, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Uniparty. Uh, the fact is you can hate Russia's guts. You can hate Russia more than you hate, you know, broccoli if you're George Bush, you know. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't mean you want to provoke a world war with them. You're free to hate whatever country you want, but it's just foolishness to want to have world war with the country, unless, of course, they come and attack us or start holding military exercises on our border. Uh, So before I close out, Dr. Paul, I do want to uh, thank, again, our sponsor uh, for June. We're in June now, and 4Patriots.com is still with us, helping us keep this show together. Now, I'll be off next week, so we won't be talking about our friends at 4Patriots. We'll be doing some other things. But I do want to encourage all of you to go to 4Patriots.com. As we move into hurricane season, we have to think about what happens when the power goes out. Well, they've got some great solutions. They've got a new generation of portable, safe, silent, 100% fume-free generators. They're fume-free because they are solar, and they're quiet because they're solar, and they're lightweight because they're solar. You can take them with you. You can expand the capacity to do what you need. When the power goes out, you can run your fridge, you can run your telephones, you can run your medical devices. The best thing about this is you go to 4 and enter the code RON to get 10% off your first purchase on anything in the store and free shipping <coughs> on all items over $97. 4 When the show is over, I will put a link in the description. And my final word, Dr. Paul, I'm sorry to take so much time, but if we can put on that final clip, This is the final time I will say this, so everyone's tired of hearing me say it. You're going to be very happy to hear that I'm done saying it. That final clip on ours. This is the last time I will be talking about our conference this Saturday, just a couple of days away. They lie. Nihilism and the war on truth. Now, we've changed this uh, program a little bit because a good friend of ours is going to join us, and that's Don Huffines. You've known Don for years. Don challenged Abbott for governor. He did a heck of a job. He is definitely all for Texas. He's going to give a little talk um, on what Texans can do and what Americans can do to prevent this lockdowns in the future. So we're looking forward to that. But in addition to Don Huffines, if you can leave that up for just a second, we have Scott Horton, Jordan Schachtel, Peter Van Buren, Ron Paul, yours truly, talking about our post-truth society. I will put a link in how you can get your tickets there are a few tickets left to this event, and we look forward to seeing you. Dr. Paul, over to you. Very good. <laughs> I want to close by a fake uh, lap of victory, a victory lap. And that's the victory lap uh, said, we taught that Bud Light company, Budweiser, we taught them, we boycotted them, and look at what's happened. They lost a lot of money. But they obviously would have straightened up their policies, wouldn't they? <laughs> well, it did seem like that happened. It's, it's, it is pretty bizarre, the, the pressure and the emphasis on driving people to do insanity that destroys their company. And so there, there's madness going on. But uh, 
it, and it doesn't stop. Those who have been dreaming and saying, well, you know, if we really uh, uh, we really achieved a lot, and we were all for the boycott. I think that's democracy at its best, and, uh, it, and it has to be sorted out, and that gives the people the right to sort out. It goes to prove that you have choices. If you don't like what the company's doing, just leave. But to take and go to the government and get more force and get the government to force you to do that, and if you don't do what we ta tell you to do, we'll cancel you and not let you go to any other stores. Who knows what will come up with it. But now that Bud, uh, uh, Budweiser had an announcement, I thought, well, maybe they're, they'll be sorry and, and confess. <laughs> With Daniel, it didn't happen that way. Bud Light, <laughs> I don't believe this. <laughs> Bud Light giving LGBTQXYZN, or whatever that is, organization, $200,000 donation to the organizations that promote these causes. <laughs> this is the philosophic money to keep Keep the people, uh, you know, angry and, and policies support the people that take their their financial risk. You know, it makes no sense. And the only way I can just avoid keep saying it makes no sense is I say there are some people who have invested their life and their energy and world history at saying the system that we have is rotten and the only way we can get rid of it is totally destroy it. And that is done by chaos in the streets, poverty and hunger. And believe me, all you have to do is make a few trips to some of our cities, walk down the streets in Cincinnati and who knows where, and you walk to our borders, you know, say, you, it looks like they're doing a pretty good job. They, they have caused the chaos. And you say, well, they're, they're just a bad bunch of people. They don't have a plan. They have a plan. And it's also uh, closely related to old fashioned, uh, old fashioned Marxism, but it's changed a little bit they saw that this is cultural marxism these are the good people that want to take over but they agree with the old marxists that what we have here has to be destroyed clean the slate and start rebuilding and that's what we're seeing so when i get to this point what are they doing but the big question is why do some of people go along why are they going along with it? How do they get so brainwashed into it? And that's usually monetary pressure and, uh, you know, who, who knows why they get switched. But those who make it the plans are saying, we're doing quite well. Just don't, the more you yell and scream at us how bad things are out there, the greater chance we will have to move in and pick up the pieces. Not a good way to go because our alternative is, is to promote peace and prosperity by promoting liberty. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.